My name is Andres Majo in Spanish. I'm a Vice President of the AES for Latin America. I'd like to talk a little bit about why audio mastering is important nowadays more and more, especially in this home studio era where everyone is recording and mixing at home and uh, it's pretty easy to find a workstation, a Pro Tools or anything you may put your hands on, bring it home, start recording, do a pretty nice mix and then hopefully release a record or a an iTunes track or whatever. Of course we have a few advantages like uh, it's usually more comfortable doing it that way and uh, definitely you can spend a lot of time for less money. So let's I have listed a number of common mistakes I would say that I find as a mastering engineer in the final mixes I get in the studio. I have mastered um, a good number of records more than a thousand and uh, I've been in this business for 17 years now so I know what kind of problems I can get and I pretty much know when it's something I can fix and when it's something I cannot fix and in that case I have to know what can be done because we cannot move on until that problem is fixed. The problem is when one part of the mix, let's say the, I don't know, the hi-hat is okay but then you have, uh, for instance, the vocals too harsh or too exceeded in that frequency range, then it's a big problem because you cannot uh, you, cannot, you cannot reduce the energy in the vocals without affecting the, the hi-hat, so that becomes a problem. The lack of brightness above 4 kilohertz is also a problem that can be solved as long as there is no difference between different elements of the mix. All in all, it will be a lack of unity and global concept of the album. Remember that the album is not just a collection of mixes, it's an album. And artists are still doing albums, not just tracks. So what do we do with all this? Once again... <laughs>